Hi guys, welcome to this next tutorial. Uh, this next tutorial is going to show you how we can take the uh, individual parts of this pulley assembly and to create uh, detailed drawings. So if you remember our last lesson, we had a single detailed drawing of one part. Uh, this time we're going to create detailed drawings of the three separate parts of this pulley assembly onto the one page. So fairly similar technique, just a little uh, change that we have more than one part on the page. And if you can see here in the solution sheet, uh, we're also going to have a sectional view of the wheel and the yoke and also the axle here you can see. I've got two solutions here, uh, one without colour and one with. And we'll experiment a little bit with colour to see whether or not uh, it works for this particular drawing. Okay, so let's go to Creo and uh, let's start the process. First thing of course, set your working directory to where you've got the pulley wheel parts uh, all stored. In this case, I've got a folder called pulley wheel. Click OK. And now let's uh, create a new drawing from there. So new, select drawing. Let's make sure we name this detail underscore uh, pulley. And I'm just going to put the year in. 20, oh, that's not right. 2017. And OK to that. OK, we're prompted with the um, uh, whether to choose a format or empty. So we choose empty with format. And from this dialog box, or browser, I should say, we're then going to choose the format that has the detail name on it. That means we're just going to get a standard A3 sheet with a name block, which we can put the views into. So click on detail and click on open. Click OK. Modeled by yourself, normally it's always in capitals. Drawing number, um, this is the first drawing I'm doing of the pulley wheel, so this is 001. Class is 10 graphics. And the material is uh, various. Okay, there's our uh, blank sheet ready to put the drawings onto. Okay, so um, let's now select the parts of the uh, pulley wheel assembly and we'll add those parts individually onto our page here. So to select some parts that we've already drawn, we come up to the Draw and Model tab here. And this dialog box is asking us to uh, whether we want to add a particular model to the working memory of Creo. And we do want to do that. So click on Add Model. And then defaults to the working directory. And at this point, I'm going to first of all add the yoke. Click on open. And then I'm going to add the wheel. Click on open. And then I'm going to add the axle. And click on open. Three uh, parts have now been loaded into the working memory of the computer. We can now set which model or which part we wish to create drawings from by now choosing Set Model. See down the bottom here, the names appear. All I need to do now is click on the one that I wish to create drawings of. So let's start off with the yoke. So click onto yoke, click onto Done Return, and then we can put the general views in. So we'll come up to the general view, click OK, and then left click, and an isometric view appears of the yoke. Let's change that isometric view to a two-dimensional view. Let's go front view, zoom in, zoom out. Suppose that didn't really give us a front view. That's more of a, a side view, I suppose. But I'm going to accept that anyway. And I'm just going to move that across there on my page. Let's now project a view to the side of this. So right-click on that view, projection view, and click. And I suppose we could argue that this could be a front view that could be a front view, probably doesn't really matter. I'm going to select this as my front view, which means if that's my front view, that's my left side view, that means I need to have a top view above the front view. So right click on the front view, project the view directly above there, like so. Okay, so there's our three views for the, uh, the yoke. Let's now uh, change the model from being the actual yoke to being perhaps the axle. So to do that we come to drawing model 
and we've already added the model, so we need to do is select the one we want. So set model, let's go to the axle, done return, general view, left click, and you can see the isometric view comes in. Let's change that to front, and that has given me the view that I'm after. Important here to make sure that the scale of this drawing and this drawing is the same on the page. So I'm going to check scale, and you can see here it's actually put in at a scale of uh, 1 is to 2, or 2 is to 1. So change the scale from being 2 back to being 1, because I'm pretty certain that this is a scale of 1 is to 1. Click Apply, click OK, and let's move that axle down here somewhere. Now, we're going to create a, uh, a side view of this axle. I might actually do this just to experiment. I'm going to project a side view to the right, and then I'm going to project a side view to the left. I'm going to zoom in, and see if there's any value in having both views. You can see here this is the end view or the side view. We've got this hidden detail line. They look fairly similar, don't they? So I think we'll just settle this with the one view. I might get rid of this one here. Select it, right click, and delete. I'm also going to get rid of that scale as well while I'm there. Okay, so we've got um, the parts for the yoke, the views, I should say, for the axle. You'll notice here there's no point in putting a top view in. If I did, it would simply look exactly the same as the front view. So there's no need for that. Delete. Let's now put the uh, last part or the last views in here, which were set the model of the wheel itself. Click on wheel. Done return. General view. Left click. Let's change that to front. Zoom in, zoom out. Now, even though that didn't give me a front, I'll, I'll just accept it. Check the scale, of course. Yes, it's a one, which is good. Apply, okay. I'm simply going to grab that side view, and from the side view, right click and project a front view out there like so. Okay, so we've got all three parts onto the uh, page, and there's enough views there now that we could be able to recognize each part without uh, too much confusion at all. All right, so probably the next thing to do is to put some lines to help divide up the page to make it clear uh, where the parts start and finish, I suppose. So what we might do, we're going to use the sketch function within Creo to sketch some extra lines on here. We're not in 3D mode, we're in 2D mode, but we've still got most of the functionality that you would normally have in 3D as well. So along the top here, let's go to the sketch tab, click on to the sketch line tool, and this box pops up. This box is asking us, do we want to snap to some lines that are already there? So what I'm going to do is going to click onto this arrow here. I'm going to click onto a vertical line and a horizontal line. doesn't matter where they are. There's a horizontal one, and there's a vertical one. And I'm going to accept those as two lines that my other lines will reference to. Once I've selected two, I can then send a mouse button to then take me out of the selection mode and into the line insert mode. Now it's asking me to start the line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here and you can see this dashed line here represents halfway across the page. And you notice as I bring the cursor um, close to the edge there or as it goes over the border, it changes to that blue color. And I'm going to move a little bit to the left as well. Hopefully get lined right up so I've got two blues. Then left click. Now move your cursor away. Oops, I might just show you what happens. Move your cursor away, and then as I bring that close to being vertical, you'll see it, it snaps to vertical because it's saying it's 90 degrees to that line, which is what we want to do. And I'm going to bring it down, right down, until it touches the name block here. Wait for it to be like blue. There we go. So there's the first one. And I might divide this nice and evenly into um, quarters. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing over here. Click once, zoom out, come across, and you can see it snaps to being parallel to that horizontal line, and then it snaps to there. Cool. Now once you've finished inserting lines, you send a mouse click again, 
and that takes you out of the line insert um, tool. Okay, so um, we we'll probably need to now work on dimensioning and also onto this sectional view up here. Now in a previous lesson we did cover dimensioning so I'm going to let you uh, work through the dimensioning uh, as you normally would do uh, from the previous lessons. lessons. Uh, but what I will show you is how we can create a sectional view up here of the wheel. We can cut it in half to reveal the interior detail about this wheel here and also how we can change some of these views to be color which sometimes helps. Uh, but we'll do that in the next tutorial.